In this video, I'll point out the disadvantages of using GetX. Please note that this is not a hate video. It just points out the problems with GetX and how this might affect your Flutter apps. Let's start. The first disadvantage is simplicity. No, don't get me wrong, it's good that GetX is built on the premise of simplicity. But simplicity comes at the cost of learning important topics. Let's take an example. This is how you manage routing in GetX versus how it's done with pure Flutter. Similarly, this is how you change theme in Flutter versus how it's done in GetX. The code is simple, but it's eliminating the usage of built context, arguably the most important concept in Flutter. There's magic all around. There's many beginner Flutter developers use GetX. They think they don't have to deal with build context and will be able to build and ship apps faster. They basically avoid many important topics a Flutter developer should know. For instance, many users shifted to GetX because they knew that when using GetX, they don't need to care about build context, be it while navigating, changing theme, managing state, showing alert dialogs, or snack bars. It's easy to use because developers can do whatever they want from wherever they want, but this comes at the cost of knowing more about important topics. If a GetX developer starts working on a real-life project that doesn't use GetX, they'll be confused of what's happening. This brings me to the second disadvantage, that is, GetX replacing Flutter. When GetX is added to a Flutter project, GetX replaces many Flutter components. For example, Material Router is replaced with Get Material Router. It is actually replaced in such a way that Get Material Router is completely rewritten. This causes a major problem because if Flutter team decides to update some properties in Material Router, it will take a long time for GetX to reflect those changes. We will discuss more about this later in the video. Another example is when Snackbar is displayed. It neither has Material Design nor Cupertino Design. This is a point of third disadvantage, that is, GetX promotes anti-patterns. As already mentioned, it neither follows Material Design nor Cupertino Design when displaying Snackbar. It also violates the unidirectional data flow principle, which means that the data will flow in only one way when being transferred to different parts of the app. To put it more simply, developers have higher probability of going against architectural patterns like MVC and MVVM when using GetX. Using GetX promoted principles might be easier and will work fine in the beginning, but remember the quote from Clean Code Book. Even bad code can function, but if code isn't clean, it can bring a development organization to its knees. Every year, countless hours and significant resources are lost because of poorly written code, but it doesn't have to be that way. So if you continue to use GetX, you need to continuously ensure that you're following the right principles when using it. It's quite easy to go off track because of the solution it provides. Let's shift to the fourth disadvantage. GetX tries to do everything you would want in your Flutter app. It's not just managing the state in app. It is also managing routing, dependencies, validation, internationalization, storage, theming, and some more stuff. It seems like a good thing that the entire app is dependent on just one plugin. But keep in mind, this is a project by a single developer or maybe a small community of developers who are not backed or funded by a company. If the developer is no longer able to continue and there is no one else to drive the project, GetX users will likely run into compatibility issues as the language progresses and adds in new features or removes others. It's risky to put so much reliance on a single package. The fifth disadvantage and probably the biggest one is that GetX lacks proper documentation. According to pub.dev, 744 out of 2454, that is 30.3% of the total API elements have documentation comments. To give you perspective, block has 100%, riverport 94% and provider 90.1%. It's unfair to compare GetX with state management tools because GetX is more than just a state management tool. However, the point is that documenting the code is quite important for packages. There are many hidden features as a result of lack of documentation. The code base is big with many classes, variables, methods not having comments. These things matter because it's quite difficult for a new developer to contribute to this package if these things are absent. This is probably why most of the commits to the GetX package are by the author himself. This is not a good indication because bringing new changes to this package gets slower when majority of the work is done by just one person. The situation gets a lot more serious when we associate the points already discussed. This package has many features and it replaces many Flutter components. Every time some property is added or deleted by Flutter team in some component, there's a possibility of GetX either breaking the code or not being compatible with the Flutter version. 
This can be fixed, but only one person doing it slows down the process and might affect production ready apps a lot. The sixth disadvantage is the less test coverage in the GetX package. Test coverage means what percentage of the app code is tested. There is less than 50% coverage in the package. 80% is considered as a good coverage. This means tests for 700 plus API elements have to be written to come under the category of good test coverage. Talking about testing, the seventh disadvantage is that testing is not friendly with GetX, be it unit testing or widget testing. Look at this question and answer. As the developer yourself, it's not intuitive. It is also a waste of time if similar errors keep repeating. The last disadvantage point is that plugin is not well thought. If you only want a state management portion of GetX, you will still get all of the extra functions and utilities GetX has. In comparison to GetX 2454 API elements, Riverpod has 85, Provider 161, and Block 56. It's quite strange for a package to have so many API elements. Another example to support the point is that Get Connect module. Most projects either use REST APIs or GraphQL. It has support for both. It can be separated into separate independent external packages. However, it is in the same package. So what's the conclusion of this video? Should you use GetX or not? In my opinion, if you're working on a hobby project and don't want to gain more knowledge on Flutter with that, you can go ahead with GetX. It is quick and offers an easy to use API. On the other hand, if you're working on a big production ready app or are just looking forward to learning more about Flutter, use different tools for different purposes. For state management, you can use Riverpod or Block. For routing, go router. For dependency management, get it or other tools you're aware of. Special thanks to Ismail Alam Khan for reviewing the points of this video. Do check out his Twitter handle mentioned in the description below. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.